Attention passengers, one of our passengers' robots is currently experiencing cyber ransomware. Are there any data care professionals on the airplane that could provide assistance? Hi there, it's Ron Gula from Gula Tech Adventures, and in this week's YouTube video, I'm going to discuss the professionalization of our cybersecurity industry. Now, in that introduction video, we saw, you know, the flight attendant, you know, kind of reaching out to the rest of the uh, passengers, asking for a cybersecurity expert. And the thought is she might have been asking for a medical expert. What is it going to take to have the general public look at people in the cybersecurity industry with the same sort of respect that they might give uh, a lawyer uh, a doctor, uh, an accountant, you know, that sort of professionalized uh, industry. Well, I think it's going to take a couple things. So first of all, cyber by itself is a very, very, very wide discipline. If you compare it to healthcare, people who are in healthcare, uh, they are specialized. You have brain surgeons, you have nurses, you have people who are nutritionists, you have people who work with children's health, you have people who, uh, you know, do cardiac uh, surgery and so on. In cyber, you know, we have these different disciplines, but we really don't talk about them like they're all part of the same industry. We might understand being inside the industry, the difference between a penetration tester and an incident responder, but on the outside for the general public, we really haven't specialized that. This is still a really, really new field. So I'm for specialization. I like when people introduce themselves as, you know, they are on the maybe the compliance side of things, they are on the penetration testing side of things. And I think a lot of people understand that, you know, cyber offense is a very, very different thing than, than, uh, than cyber, cyber defense. But what I think we're missing as an industry is the act that we're all together, right? It used to be like, hey, I have, I'm a doctor and, and you know, I know good because I'm a doctor and I've been to these amazing schools and whatnot. But somebody's on the front line of service, perhaps a, a nurse or a physician's assistant who's diagnosing a flu, you know, they're now in the healthcare uh, industry and they're considered a professional as well. We need to bring that into our own industry. I've seen a lot of cyber people who kind of elevate the red team people, the incident responders, the offensive people as sort of the tip of the spear, not trying to take away anything. That takes a lot of skill and effort to do some of that stuff. But somehow it sort of demin it, it, uh, diminishes the value of the person applying the patch who might be like the same thing as like a nurse you know, applying a Band-Aid to, uh, to a system. However, you know, that's really, really, really critical. Uh, so I definitely think that the more we think about that kind of stuff, uh, the more we're going to professionalize how we think about cyber. Now, I want to take this healthcare reference a step further. Anybody who watches the channel knows that Cindy Gula and I love to push the concept of calling our industry data care. And data care solves a couple things. First of all, as a professional, you know, a lot of the people in cybersecurity, they're white dudes kind of like myself. We're, we don't really do a good job trying to bring in people who don't look like me to our industry. It's not because people are racist, it's because we don't have the tools to do it. Cyber is just too many things to too many people. Calling it data care takes two things off the table. The first thing is the word security is a non-starter in some African-American communities who are not looking to go into policing or security in general. They're not going to make that jump from not, believe, not wanting to be a police officer to you know, wanting to go into a career in cyber security, which is unfortunate because you know, in some of these inner city areas and areas that are perhaps hit economically, uh, even rural America and whatnot, you know, cyber you can do from anywhere, which is a good thing. The second thing is that a lot of the cybersecurity imagery we use is very lean forward, run to the fire, run to the threat, you know, the soldier running into the, I think, you know, look, everybody is not cut out like that. We might like to think we are, but we're, we're not. If we were, we wouldn't have a recruiting problem in the, in the DOD right now. Having said that, recruiting people to uh, cybersecurity, typically, stereotypically with, with women who are not going to run to that fire, and even men who are not going to run to that fire, that imagery is going to turn people off. We basically tell people in cyber that, look, you might be the only person in cybersecurity and it's going to be up to you to defend this network from Russia and China. Again, that's an example of standing up and basically saying, you know, you're going to put the whole world on your back and that's tough. It's a turnoff for a lot of people. However, if you start thinking about the majority of the life cycle of IT security, which is, 
you know, basically planning and nurturing and taking care of systems, that's a much different mentality than maybe a combat sort of, uh, so, sort of, of, of imagery. So calling our industry data care is going to make it easier for people to come to our industry. It's going to make it more professionalized as well. Now, the second thing with calling it data care is it makes personal responsibility something. And this is something in every other uh, career field, if you look at a, a, the, the legal field, if you look at the, the medical field, they, do, they don't just say live your life however you want, right? You have to take certain precautions, both from a legal point of view and also from a healthcare point of view, right? You need to exercise, you can take vitamins, you need to eat right, get enough sleep. If you don't do that, you know, the medical industry can do some stuff. But look, if you do that, you're going to be a lot better off. There's a lot of parallels between that message and cyber hygiene. There's a lot of parallels between, you know, actually putting some stuff like following the recommendations of the NIST cybersecurity framework or the, uh, you know, to try to protect the network. And in in that way, it's going to be a lot easier for our industry to actually, you know, make a difference with that general public and get that buy-in from them. Right now saying, oh, you're a stupid user or, you know, blaming the victim if somebody gets ransomware, that doesn't really help us professionally. Now, another couple things we could do, I've heard suggested, is have a separate cyber service. Like right now, we have a cyber command. Cyber command, you can still be part of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and go to work at cyber command. This is unlike Space Force, what it's actually another military uh, organization. Now, having a separate cyber command would basically give people sort of something they can point to and says, look, this is a real industry. It's a real, it's a real thing. Now, I'm not going to cry if that happens. But personally, given the choice, I'm, a, I'm against it. And a lot of people make sort of the uh, connection to Space Command that we should have a, a, a Space Force and have a separate cyber force, if, if you will. And I got one argument against that. We don't have a medical force. I've just spent probably about five minutes talking about the relationship between the medical field and the cyber field. And it's actually very similar, right? If you even think about there's probably people in the government doing offensive biological weapons research, trying to make sure we're defending from those kind of things. It's not much different than cyber offense. Well, there's 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 a difference that I'll get into in a second. But the, the point is, is that we have this whole cadre, this whole core of doctors and and uh, nurses and physicians assistants and people who keep our, our, our war fights safe. A lot of these people are on the front lines, right? And it's the same thing in cyber. Even though you have a cyber command right now, they might be responsible for putting out policy and directives and sharing threat intelligence and doing cyber offense. But for the most part, the vast majority of the people who are doing defenses in IT are actually in the Army and in the Navy and the Air Force. So even though it might be interesting for us as cyber professionals, as data care in industry experts, to have a separate cyber force, I personally don't think it is because it's a medium that permeates everything else. And a lot of people argue, well, cyberspace is a war fighting phase. And I, I, I just think we're still doing cyber wrong, uh, both offense and defense, defensively, because the tech changes every year. Like the argument I like to talk about is that if, if cyber command was like the Air Force, the F-16 pilots, the F-22 pilots, right? They would be the ones, they would not, not only be the flyers, but they would be building their, their stuff. A lot of times our people who do government offense and defense tend to build the tools that they uh, that they that they use that's just not a scalable way to do it it takes a little bit away from the professionalism argument as well because when you have this this workforce that does offense and defense it's it's a little little bit interesting so anyway the point there is that i'm against a separate cyber workforce a separate cyber uh, uh force if you will sort of like space force because it's just something we, we already have within our, uh, within our groups. Hi there. Hi there. Sorry for the interruption. I'm one of the AI bots that helps behind the scenes here at Gula Tech Adventures. We'd like to point out that Ron actually omitted a uniformed medical service that exists in the United States. The Commission Corps of the U.S. Public Health Service, sometimes referred to as the USPHS Commissioned Corps. This is a uniformed service that fights disease, conducts research, and cares for patients in underserved communities across the nation and throughout the world. Perhaps in a future video, I will suggest to Ron that uniformed services such as the Public Health Service, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and the Coast Guard might offer some models for consideration of a separate cyber force that supports the country and government and professionals' forms of data care. And now back to your previous YouTube video. And don't forget to subscribe or give us a like. So then the last thing I'm going to talk about is how we can professionalize people, is how we talk about our industry to other people. 
when when we start giving advice to people like you how to be secure you need two factor authentication you need to patch your computers you need to you know not put signal on your desktop right these are all things that cyber experts even such as myself will share on a channel like this but what it does, it makes us look like, I would say, ambulance chasers of, of, uh, of, of, from law firms who are looking for perhaps predatory cases that they can use to, you know, to, to run their business and whatnot versus strategic sound advice. Let me give you an example. If we actually told people, look, if you are running a small business, you might say, hey, follow the NIST cybersecurity framework. You might even be something a little bit more technically prescriptive, such as use two-factor authentication. But the better message is to get an MSP, get an MSSP, get somebody who runs your IT and is going to keep your data safe the same way that you choose an accountant, that you choose a law firm, and that you choose a finance firm to actually run your business. In other words, if you're going to run a small business and you're going to conduct business on the internet, whether you're just taking credit cards or you're doing online gaming, you have to have somebody who's got your back the same way that you, in cyberspace, the same way that you have somebody who gets your legal back and it gets your, your accounting back to do, to do taxes. And until we start talking about our industry like this, we are going to be delivering very, very blurred messages, very, very uh, messages that are diluted because one day we're saying two-factor authentication. The second, second day we're saying don't host your data in China. The third day, you know, go to the cloud, don't go on-prem. It's, it's really, really tough as an industry to have a very, very strategic message. And it's hard for our industry to actually have that professionalism of what's going on. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about as far as professionalizing our industry is certifications. And uh, this causes a lot of groaning. Should we get a four-year degree? Should there be PhD? Should there be certifications? If you look at other industries and you look how lawyers have to pass the bar over and over again, if you look at how doctors have to not only get recertified, but they get certified in specialized fields, what does that mean for, for data care? What does that mean for cybersecurity? Well, it means a few things. So there's certain things that have happened in our industry that I think are going to be harbingers of better things to come. So the first of all is you can get board level certifications for private and public companies where you're going to be a responsible person who's going to take care of the, the cybersecurity risk for that company. Uh, the NACD has a certificate certification course you can take where you can become a, a certified NA, NACD cybersecurity expert to help those corporations manage their risk. There's also things like the Digital Directors Network where you become a qualified technology expert, again, where you can be certified in how to do uh, risk taking from a digital point of view. Now that's completely different than certifications like ISC squared and CISPA, which is sort of like a survey, a general survey of all things cybersecurity. If you go back to the offensive things, there's something called a cyber warfare engineer. This is a certification that exists that really allows the cyber workforce, which includes soldiers, military people in uniform, as well as contractors to basically do and construct offensive engineers with the same kind of precision that we might make weapon systems like um, you know, the Patriot missile and that, that, that sort of thing. That's another level of certification. Now, are we going to have even more certifications? When you start looking at the range of everything we have, we have certifications for routing and switching. We have certifications for firewall, certifications for malware analysis. At some point, those certifications, you have to have the level of sophistication in them where you're basically not only preventing the loss of data, but the loss of life itself. And a lot of times folks in cyber don't talk about how important what we do keeps the lights on, keeps the trucks going, keeps the water flowing. But the reality is all of those things are critical to not only the nation, but how the nation competes globally on an economic better, and also with great nations that we're struggling against, such as Russia, China, Iran, and, and, and North Korea. And if those certifications kind of adopted this mindset, I think you'd see a little bit more professionalism in how we are treated by the outside public. So what do you think about this? Should there be a separate cyber service? Can there be other things done that uh, cyber professionals should do other than calling our industry data care and sort of taking that talk to the walk? Please let me know. Uh, leave a comment on this YouTube channel. Connect with us on LinkedIn. I kind of want to hear from from what you're, you're, you're saying. Uh, Cindy and I both go out to the public and speak a lot about this kind of topic. If you want us to speak in an event that uh, you're having on this, we're happy to share this kind of information, take questions from the audience, and hopefully inspire people to not only you know, join this great career field where 
You can do this job from just about anywhere and in just about any kind of industry, but it's important for the nation, especially as we're looking at the dawn of this new AI industry and how important it is and where we store our data and protect our data. I'm Ron Gula. I hope you found this video really interesting. I hope you have a great week. Give us a like if you enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching.